Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, Module 7, Lesson 1, Angle Relationships and Parallel Lines. After this lesson, you need to be able to use the relationships between angles to find the measures of missing angles. Let's learn lines, angles, and transversals. Pairs of angles can be classified by their relationship to each other. A special case occurs when two lines intersect to form a right angle. These lines are called perpendicular lines. Special notation is used to indicate perpendicular lines. You might see this symbol right here. This is read as L is perpendicular to M. In our picture down here, perpendicular lines usually have a little box in the corner that helps indicate that it is perpendicular or that it forms a right angle. So if we see that, we're gonna know that that angle is perpendicular or 90 degrees. Two lines that never intersect are called parallel lines. A line that intersects two or more other lines in a plane is called a transversal. And then special notation is used to indicate parallel lines. We see this symbol right here, similar to perpendicular where we can see they're crossing. You're gonna see two lines that do not cross. And this is read as line S is parallel to line T. If we're given a picture, Many times we will see these little arrowheads showing which things are parallel. And that's going to be helpful to look for as parallel lines have specific angle properties. And then a line that's cutting across two or more other lines, that is called a transversal. So line R here is a transversal. When a transversal intersects two parallel lines, eight angles are formed. And these angles have special relationships. So four of the angles are interior angles. And when we say interior, we mean they're located between the parallel lines. So interior between the two parallel lines. There are also four exterior angles that are outside the parallel lines. So our interior angles here, we have three, four, five, and six. They are the four angles that are inside the parallel lines. The exterior angles that are outside the parallel lines one and two, and then on the other side, outside the parallel lines, we have angles seven and eight. So we have interior, that's inside or between them, exterior, that is outside. And those words are gonna be important to know as some of the angles are named those, and it helps you to determine the location of those types of angles. When two parallel lines are cut by that transversal, there's also relationships between the angles that are created. Depending on where these angles are located and which pairs we're talking about, we could have alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding angles. Those angles are going to have the same angle measure. And when we're talking about angle measure, we have a special notation written like this. We have M and then an angle. That stands for the measure of angle and then whatever we're talking about. So here, this is the measure of angle one. Alternate interior angles are interior angles that lie on the opposite side of our transversal. The name gives us a little bit of a clue about where the angles are located. I'm gonna start with the word interior. Interior, again, meaning inside our parallel. So we're looking at angles three, four, five, and six. For alternate, we're looking at opposite sides of the transversal, but not only that, kind of like the opposite corners. So angles four and six are alternate interior angles. The same would be angle three and angle five. These angle pairs have equal measures. So the measure of angle four is the same as the measure of angle six. Angle three and angle five have the same measure, meaning they are the same size angle. Alternate exterior angles work pretty much the same way as the interior ones, but they're on outside. We have exterior, so outside of the parallel, the alternate part, they're still opposite to the transversal. So angle one is alternate exterior with angle seven. Angle two is alternate exterior with angle eight. Again, those angle pairs have the same measure. So angle one has the same measure as angle seven. Angle two has the same measure as angle eight. A third type of angle pair that's formed are called corresponding angles. They are in the same position on the two lines in relation to the transversal. When the transversal cuts parallel lines, they also have equal measures. So in this case, we have angle one and angle five. They are in the same position 
relative to the transversal. One's just on one parallel line, the other's on the other. Following that same thing, angle two, angle six have the same measure, angle three and angle seven are in the same position, so they have the same measure, and angle four with angle eight, they have the same measure. So if they're in the same position, they are called corresponding angles and they also have the same measure. So all the ones we just looked at, alternate interior, alternate exterior, and corresponding, they are all equal when we're talking about the pair of angles. Example one, classify angle pairs. Classify the relationship between angle one and angle seven in the figure as alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding, or we really should take into the fact that it could be none of these. So first let's locate angle one, which is right here, and angle seven, which is right here. The first thing I notice, they are outside the parallel lines. So right away, I know that they are exterior. So exterior, it's probably either alternate exterior or the reason I said it could be none is because you can have things that are exterior that are not alternate exterior and they wouldn't be corresponding either because they wouldn't be in the same position. So these are exterior. Are they alternate exterior? They are on opposite sides of our transversal there. So yes, these are exterior angles that are on opposite sides of the transversal. So they are alternate exterior angles. If we were given two and seven, even though they are exterior, they're not opposite sides of the transversal. So that would be an instance where it would be none of the types. So be careful that it fits both criteria for the type that you're looking at. Check your understanding, read through the situation and classify the angles given as alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said these are corresponding angles. Here's angle two, here's angle four. So our first step is to locate them. They are in the same position relative to the parallel lines and the transversal. So that makes them corresponding. They're not both inside, so they can't be alternate interior. They're not both outside, they can't be alternate exterior. These are corresponding. Example two, classify angle pairs. Classify the relationship between angle two and angle six in the figure as alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding, or again, could be none of them. Let's find angle two and six. So here's angles two, here's angle six. Angle two and angle six are in the same position in relation to the transversal. So just as we saw in our check, these are corresponding angles. It's like we took one of the angles and we were able to just move it and it fits perfectly on top of the other, no rotations or anything. Check your understanding. What would angle four and angle five be considered? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. These are alternate exterior angles. So here's angle four, here's angle five. They are outside the parallel and on opposite sides of the transversal. So these would be alternate exterior angles. Outside for exterior, opposite for alternates. Let's learn, find missing angle measures. When two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, eight angles are formed. Special relationships exist amongst the pairs of angles. Complete the missing angle measures in the table. So first we're saying angle one is 105, angle two is 75, angle three is 75, angle four is 105. So I'm gonna fill that in over here just so we can see how this works. Angle one and four were 105, angles two and three were 75. We can use any of the three angle relationships we were just talking about, so alternate interior, alternate exterior, or corresponding, to figure out what five, six, seven, and eight are equal to. If I wanna use corresponding angles, I can say angle one has the same measure as angle five. So that would also be 105. I also could have used alternate interior. Angle four would be the same as angle five. 
And again, I still would have found that it was equal to 105 degrees. I can do the same thing with angles. I can do the same thing with angles 2 and angle 6 using corresponding to find that angle 6 is 75. Or I could have done alternate interior angles again with angle 3 and still found 75. For angles 7 and 8, we can use alternate exterior angles. So one would be an exterior with 8, meaning this is 105. Two would be an exterior with 7, so that would be 75. Or I could have used corresponding. Angle 4 goes with angle 8. Angle 3 goes with angle 7. There are a bunch of different ways. Using any of the three methods, we can figure out the missing measures of angles. In addition to the three angle pairs we just looked at, if we know the measure of one angle, we can also use our knowledge of supplementary and vertical angles to find the measure of the three angles along the same line. We're not really going to see complementary angles unless we're dealing with a perpendicular line, which most of the time it's not. So if we're given in our picture, angle one is equal to 50 degrees. We can quickly figure out Angle 2 is equal to 130 degrees because angle 1 and 2 are supplementary. They make a straight angle when put together. They are supplementary, and supplementary adds to 180. We can figure out angle 3 because angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. Vertical angles were the ones that are directly across from each other when two lines intersect. They have the same measure. So if 1 was 50, then 3 is 50. For angle 4, we can say angle 1 and angle 4 are also supplementary, so that would be 130 as well. Or, now that we knew angle 2, angle 2 and 4 were vertical, so that would be equal. Example 3. Find missing angle measures. Mrs. Kumar designed the bookcase shown. Line A is parallel to line B. If the measure of angle 2 is 105 degrees, find the measure of angle 6 and the measure of angle 3. Justify your answer. So part A, let's find the measure of angle 6. So here's angle 6. We need to be able to find that angle. What we're given is angle 2 is 105. Notice angle 2 and angle 6 together make a straight angle, so they are supplementary meaning if we add them together, we get 180 degrees. If angle two is already 105, then angle six must be 75. I get that by subtracting. I take away the measure I know from 180 and I'll get what's left. So 180 minus 105 tells us our missing angle was 75. So that's our measure for angle six. Next, let's find the measure of angle three. So I rewrote that measure of angle six was 75. We can see now that 6 and 3, the other one I want to know, have a special relationship that we just looked at. They are alternate interior, so inside the parallel, and they are opposite corners, opposite of that transversal. Since they are alternate interior angles, their measures are equal. And if they're equal, since measure of angle 6 is 75, then the measure of angle 3 also must be 75. So 75, both angle 6 and angle 3 were 75 degrees. Check your understanding. Find the measures of angles 1 and 2. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found angle 1 is 145 degrees, while angle 2 is 35. So let's plug in what we know. Angle 7 down here is 35. I'm looking to figure out angle 2 and angle 1. Here, angle 7 and angle 2, they are alternate exterior angles. Outside the parallel, opposite sides of the transversal. So this one's on this side, this one's on this side. Alternate exterior angles are equal. So if 7 is equal to 35, then 2 is also equal to 35, which is what they said. Then angles 2 and 1, they form a straight angle, meaning they are supplementary. So 180, take away 35, and I end up with 145. Example 4, find missing angle measures. 
In the figure, line M is parallel to line N, and line Q is perpendicular to line P. The measure of angle 1 is 40 degrees. What is the measure of angle 7? This picture looks pretty complicated, but if we fill in our angles as we go, we can start to work our way towards angle 7. So we know angle 1 is 40. So I'm going to put 40 in that place. We also know the measure of angle 8. They gave us this little box here and told us that Q is perpendicular to P. So this is 90. Angle 7 is what we are trying to get to. So let's start filling in stuff around it. To get to angle 7, let's look at our diagram and see if we can figure out the quickest way to get there. I could go across and say that 40, angle 9 must also be 40. I could make two supplementary, but I end up filling in angles that I don't really need to get there. I can, but they're not necessary. If I look closely, I have angle 1 there. It forms the special relationship with angle 6. They're outside our parallel, and our transversal that crosses the parallel this direction is P. So if we ignore line Q, angle 1 and angle 6, they are alternate exterior angles. So if angle 1 is 40, then angle 6 is also 40. Once we know that, these three angles together make a straight angle, so they would add to 180. Since 6, 7, and 8 add to 180, we would add their measures together to equal 180. 6 was 40, we just figured that out. Angle 8 was our right angle, so that was 90. Combine these two together, that's 130 degrees. So we have to find the measure of angle 7, what's left to get to 180. Take away what we already have, measure of angle 7 is 50 degrees. So this would be 50 degrees here. These three angles here are supplementary and add to 180. Check your understanding. What is the measure of angle 4? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found that angle 4 is 35 degrees. Let's see if we can figure out the most efficient way to get there. It tells us angle 7 is 125, that's down here. And C is perpendicular to D, so we have a 90 degree angle. We also have a 90 degree angle right here, showing that in the other place where C is perpendicular to D. We want to figure out angle 4. For this, there's a couple different ways that you could do it that are about the same time that it takes. So if I make this supplementary, these two together, then 8 must be 55 degrees, since those two would add to 180. Then I could see that angle 8 is corresponding with angle 3, so this also would be 55. They're in the same position on our parallel. Last, these three angles together, 90 plus plus angle 4. Make sure you write the angle symbol here so you don't think it's 4. And 55. Those three added together is 180. If I take away 90 and take away 55, so I just took away both of those, I'm left with 35 degrees. So the measure of angle 4 is 35 degrees. There are other ways to get there. Maybe you noticed this angle here, they are vertical. Then it would correspond to this angle here with both of those together. 90 plus what is 125, still would get 35. So there are different ways to solve this. Get there in the most efficient way possible.